Gale of the Red Mist is a dangerous place, and weapons are key to an anime vampire's survival, as the old saying goes. Welcome to a comprehensive weapon guide for Code Vein. I'll be splitting this up into multiple parts based on weapon class. It will include where to find these weapons, my opinions on their general usefulness, and the damage they deal for a character at level 1, level 50, level 100, level 200, and the max level of 300. In this video, we will cover hammers! For the sake of accurate comparison, I'll be using the Queen Slayer Blood Code with the Willpower Up, Strength Plus Willpower Up, Mind Plus Willpower Up, and the Mind Up Passives. This will give us an A rating in every stat that is relevant to weapons, and thus allow us to wield every single weapon in the game with the same build. I would not recommend using this build for exploring, since you can only equip two weapons at a time, and it misses out on a few really useful passives and active buffs. It's better to have a setup that leans into your chosen weapon's strengths and your own personal playstyle. I'll be throwing around some terms as I describe the weapons and their moves, so let's make sure there isn't any confusion. The weak attack is just that, a quicker, low damage, low stamina cost attack. The weak attack chain is simply the series of attacks that happen when you repeatedly press the weak attack button. Sometimes it's just two swings, sometimes it's three swings, and sometimes it's four swings. Then the animations loop around back to the first swing. The sprinting attack is a weak attack you use while sprinting. Shocking, I know. I usually won't go out of my way to say anything about the sprinting attacks unless it's something special. Same for the rolling attacks. The animation changes depending on whether you dodge forwards, backwards, or to the sides, but they don't really fit into the weak attack chain, or they just act as a substitute for the first swing. A combo weak attack is a unique move each weapon has that you can do by holding the dash button and pressing weak attack while not moving your character. It's usually a lunging attack that covers a lot of ground, an attack that knocks enemies down, a wide sweeping attack, or a combination of these. The uncharged heavy attack is what you get when you tap the heavy attack button. The fully charged heavy is when you hold the heavy attack button for a few seconds. There is no partial charge mechanic in code vein. If you let go of the heavy attack button too soon, you will just perform an uncharged heavy attack. Feel free to practice the different moves to your heart's content on the training dummy back at home base. Speaking of the training dummy at home base, I'll be performing all of the damage tests on it. This is worth mentioning because the dummy has neither any elemental resistances nor elemental weaknesses. Some weapons have innate elemental damage and will be more effective against some enemies and weaker against others. I'll mention this again when we get to the individual weapons with built-in elemental damage. Lastly, all of the weapons were tested without any transformations since this can change the damage dramatically based on your level, what passives you have equipped, and what you're fighting. You can think of the damage numbers I provide as a rough estimate for a generic character rather than the highest possible damage you can achieve with the right preparations. Okay, now that the preliminary stuff has been cleared up, let's jump right in! Big, chunky, and slow, the hammers are an often overlooked weapon class. Their damage isn't as high as the great swords, but they make up for this with better drain ratings and slightly better stagger. Truthfully, there's only a handful of places in the game where hammers noticeably out-stagger the great swords, and for the rest of the time, they're pretty much equal. The drain rating is superb, and more than makes up for the lack of damage. A Devourer Hammer works beautifully on a hybrid caster build as soon as you can mitigate the fairly hefty weight. Believe it or not, but all three axes count as hammers as far as melee skills are concerned. They're also a bit faster than your standard hammers, but boasting better drain ratings and slower swing speeds compared to halberds. One minor note, the Obliterator Axe is a halberd and not an axe. I don't know why it's called an axe. It looks like an oversized mace and neither like an axe or halberd or whatever. If you want to learn more about the Obliterator Axe, check out my Halberd Guide in the top right corner now! Okay then, let's take a look at each and every hammer. The Queen Slayer Hammer! Leading off our list is the Queen Slayer Hammer. Because of the good strength scaling, this hammer is a solid weapon with good damage that only gets better the more you level up. You get a plus 5 pre-upgraded Queen Slayer Hammer near the start of the player memories behind a locked door. Don't worry, the key is near the start, too, just behind the first bayonet lost you see. Simply grab the key and backtrack a bit to pick it up. The weak attack chain is two vertical smashes followed by a short range horizontal sweep. The combo weak attack is a slower horizontal sweep that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a short range overhead slam, while the fully charged heavy is a longer range overhead slam that pancakes enemies. The Queen Slayer Hammer is a good choice of hammer for any build, so long as you can overcome its weight. The Hammer of Thraldom. And now we immediately drop to the worst weapon in the game. As to be expected since it's one of the starting weapons, though. The Concrete Club is too heavy, too slow, and too weak. 
Sure, you can yeet enemies off cliffs, but its weaknesses are painfully clear in boss fights. The weak attack chain is two overhead slams followed by a short range sweep. The combo weak attack is another short range horizontal sweep that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a short range overhead slam, while the fully charged heavy is a longer range overhead slam that pancakes enemies. The moveset is pretty reasonable as far as hammers are concerned, but the high weight and the low damage is crippling. Avoid using this thing unless you want a serious handicap. The Juggernaut Hammer! Next up is the first usable hammer you can acquire, the Juggernaut Hammer. It's another decent but unremarkable hammer. You acquire the Juggernaut Hammer when you defeat Oliver at the end of the tutorial area. The weak attack chain is a diagonal smash followed by a horizontal bash. The combo weak attack is a cartwheeling overhead slam that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a horizontal sweep, while the fully charged heavy is a triple slam that deals solid damage, but leaves you wide open for a counterattack. Try as you might, you can't cancel or dodge out of the triple swing once it starts, so be very careful when using this move. As you can see from the damage chart, this is another reasonable weapon that makes a decent choice for early game, but starts to lose steam when you compare it to other hammers. It's passable, but not spectacular in any fashion. The Heavy Axe Here we have our first of three axes, the Heavy Axe. You can acquire it in the first chest of the tutorial area. There is also a fortified Heavy Axe in the Den of the Dead Depths map. It's only a plus zero upgrade, but at least you don't need to gather an Atlas Chrome and 10,000 Haze to transform the one from the tutorial area. As mentioned previously, the swing speed is faster than the hammers, but the damage and drain rating is lower. The weak attack chain is alternating horizontal chops. The combo weak attack is a cartwheeling overhead slam that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy attack is a slow horizontal chop, while the fully charged heavy is a three-hit combo that leaves you wide open again. As far as weapons go, the heavy axe is a decent choice if you want something with a bit more power than the Bardiche, but something lighter than the Zweihander. The Impulse Anchor! Next on the list is the Impulse Anchor. This is basically a sledgehammer with a rocket on the back to add some extra oomph to your strikes. Or just explode. You acquire a plus four Impulse Anchor in the Cathedral of the Sacred Blood just before the Outer Tower checkpoint. It's easy to overlook if you're in a hurry. I know the Cathedral is confusing, so just follow this route from the start to claim your prize. The Impulse Anchor is actually a really good choice for low level characters because of its high base damage but it starts to taper off in damage compared to some of the other hammers with better scaling. The weak attack chain is a diagonal swing followed by a horizontal smash. The combo weak attack is a horizontal sweep that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a somewhat short range uppercut slam that doesn't launch enemies, while the fully charged heavy is a hefty overhead smash followed by an explosion. This explosion actually ticks multiple times causing heavy damage. Flashy, fun, and perfect for level 1 characters. I kind of feel like this hammer was made just for me. The Huge Hammer! Now let's take a look at the Huge Hammer, a chunky, hefty hammer with built-in blood damage. The built-in blood damage is bad since blood is the most commonly resisted element. It seriously cripples this weapon because it doesn't really have the physical damage to make up for this weakness. You can find a plus six upgraded huge hammer in a chest halfway between the first and second checkpoints of Ashen Cavern. Just follow this route from the start to claim your prize. Be careful because a poison blob enemy will fall from the ceiling when you go for it. There's also a fortified huge hammer in the Arachnid Grotto depths, but it isn't upgraded beyond being transformed. The weak attack chain is nothing but vertical slams, which is this weapon's only saving grace. These kind of attacks are good for impact wave. The combo weak attack is a delayed horizontal sweep that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a somewhat quick horizontal smash, while the fully charged heavy is a mean-tastic full tilt running charge that deals five consecutive hits. You can even change directions while charging, letting you whip this beast around any direction you please. In summary, the moves are fun and effective. I just wish this bad boy dealt pure physical damage. Then again, the huge hammer would be stupidly OP if that were the case. Oh well, the Pain Train attack is still really fun as it is. The Argent Wolf Warhammer. Next up is a fairly rare hammer that has a special characteristic. The Argent Wolf Warhammer is one of the few weapons that can reach 100% physical resistance upon block when you fortify it at Rin's shop. This means you can block all incoming damage, even elemental damage, assuming the attack can be blocked. Not only that, but it has the highest damage of any hammer at max level. You can only get the Argent Wolf Warhammer from the White Cerberus Knights wielding these hammers, the earliest of which can be found in the first checkpoint of the government bunker. 
The weak attack chain is three horizontal smashes. The combo weak attack is a slower horizontal smash that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a delayed horizontal smash, while the fully charged heavy is a chunky horizontal slam. The Argent Wolf Warhammer is a solid choice of weapon. It's also a good looking armament too. Even though it is a late game weapon, I still recommend it. The Tyrant Labreeze. Our second of three axes is the Tyrant Labreeze. You can acquire the Tyrant Labreeze upon defeat of Insatial Despo. Insatial Despo. Insatial Home Depot. Whatever. This means you are guaranteed to get it quite early in the game. As an axe, it is lighter than the other hammers. However, the Tyrant Labreeze is the heaviest axe around. The weak attack chain is alternating vertical, then horizontal strikes. The combo weak attack is a cartwheeling overhead slam that knocks down enemies. The uncharged heavy is a delayed double slash, while the fully charged heavy is an overhead slam with a blood explosion. This is the only weapon in Code Vein that behaves like a different weapon class. In essence, it's a hammer that swings like a greatsword and weighs almost as much. In terms of pure stats, it is overshadowed by greatswords, but still fun to use. The Sunset Hammer Now, on to one of my favorite hammers. The Sunset Hammer is dropped by the fat, big mama enemies wielding hammers. It's somewhat rare, sitting somewhere between the other Sunset weapons and the Hunter and Black weapons. The Sunset Hammer is special because it is the lightest vanilla true hammer. You get a natural quick dodge on a bunch of different codes with an alleviated hammer, an alleviated ivory grace veil, and the Revenant's ambition passive. It shares a lot of similarities with the huge hammer we previously covered. Namely, both have built-in blood damage. The main difference is that the huge hammer lacks good physical damage, while the sunset hammer has plenty. This weapon actually outperforms the huge hammer at every level, making it a good pick for the early or late game. The weak attack chain is two overhead slams followed by a horizontal smash. The combo weak attack is a cartwheeling overhead slam that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a short range overhead slam, while the fully charged heavy is a long reaching overhead slam that flattens enemies. If you're having trouble getting the DLC hammers, run a full caster setup while wielding this thing to give yourself an edge. Just don't swing more than once and you'll be fine. The Burned Warhammer Next in line is a hammer that fills a very specific niche but does so incredibly well. Before I talk about its one job, let me tell you where to find it. You loot a plus six burned warhammer from a chest in the City of Falling Flame, close to the final checkpoint. However, it is easier to get to if we start from the second checkpoint. Just follow the route shown here. So what is the one job of the burned warhammer? Smashing the ice armor of the purple, angry, frosty Sonic the Hedgehog enemies. You can shatter that armor with either crush type damage or fire damage. The burned warhammer has both damage types, so you can shatter their armor in just three swings. This makes the dual Frosty Sonic fight and Silent White deaths much easier, especially if you load up the Crimson Moon or Dancing Blaze spells to assist with damage. Silent White isn't the only place that suits the Burned Warhammer. Tower of Trials 1 starts off with ice enemies for the first two floors and features a rematch with Butterfly on the third. Guess what element she's weak to? Be warned though, since she can be very unpredictable if you haven't memorized every little tell of her combos. The weak attack chain is repeating vertical smashes. The combo weak attack is another cartwheeling overhead slam that knocks enemies down. The uncharged heavy is a delayed double smash, while the fully charged heavy is a beefy overhead slam followed by a fiery explosion. How would I describe the burned warhammer? It's hot and smashy, just the way I like it. The Lost Heavy Axe Rounding out the last of the vanilla weapons, we have the last of the axes, too. The Lost Heavy Axe is very stylish, but it is the lightest and weakest of the three axes. You acquire the Lost Heavy Axe from the small Lost wielding it, making it quite rare. Big Lost, like the Elephant Guys, or the red or purple long-haired Lost, never drop their weapons. The Weak Attack Chain is alternating left and right slashes. Combo Weak Attack is a delayed horizontal slash that sends opponents sprawling. The Uncharged Heavy is another delayed horizontal slash that deals high damage, while the Fully Charged Heavy is a triple slash that can't be cancelled once you start it. The Lost Heavy Axe has one severe weakness. You guessed it, this weapon has built-in blood damage. I really want to love this weapon, but it is by far the most situational axe, and therefore the weakest of the three. Yes, it is the lightest axe, but not impressively so. 
The difference between the Heavy Axe and the Lost Heavy Axe is pretty inconsequential. The Snowdrift Shurrer. Let's take a look at the first of two DLC hammers, the Snowdrift Shurrer. It's a very interesting weapon that is a serious downgrade compared to the vanilla Argent Wolf Warhammer. Once fortified, the hammer reaches 100% block in every category, just like the Zwei Hander. The big difference is the weight between this weapon and the Zwei. The Snowdrift Shurrer is much lighter, but as a result, deals a lot less damage. Compared to the Fullman Blade one-handed sword, the hammer deals more stagger, but the damage difference between the two is slight. Moreover, the Fullman Blade weighs less and attacks faster. It's sad that this hammer doesn't have a niche to fill. You acquire the Snowdrift Shurrer by defeating Frozen Empress with three revives or fewer while wielding any hammer. The moveset is exactly the same as the standard Argent Wolf Warhammer, but the fully charged heavy buffs your weapon with ice for a limited time at the cost of two Icor. The buff sticks around if you change weapons, so you don't necessarily need to keep this weapon out to take advantage of this special characteristic. If you need the blocking power of his Y but can't deal with the weight, or if you need heavy stagger with ice damage always at the ready, try out the Snowdrift Shurrer. In any other situation, just use the Argent Wolf Warhammer. The Hellfire Hammer Rounding out our list of hammers is the lightest hammer in the game. The fact that it also has a built-in fire buff into the heavy attacks is also very beneficial in the right situations. It's also noteworthy that it is the only true dexterity hammer. You get the Hellfire Hammer by defeating Hellfire Knight with three revives or fewer while wielding any hammer. The fact that this is the absolute lightest hammer is noteworthy, however, it does have a greedy dexterity requirement. The moveset is exactly the same as the Sunset Hammer, except the fully charged heavy will shroud the weapon in fire. It's a decent enough moveset, all things considered, and the fire buff comes in handy if you're fighting something weak to that while still being a pure physical hammer if you encounter an enemy that resists fire damage. Assuming that you can manage the requirements, you'll be rewarded with a light and generally effective hammer. And that's every hammer and axe in Code Vein. Again, shoutouts to the Big O, Blade of Want, and my friends on Discord for helping compile all this info and proofread this guide. A very special thanks to you, of course, for watching this all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. I hope this was informative, or at least entertaining. See you later!